Hey everybody, welcome back to AP Stats. We're still designing experiments, and so we're going to talk about how to set up a good experiment. We talked about some of the issues the last time. We're going to talk about this stuff. Now, um, there's a video. I have the link down below. It's from Good Morning America. It's um, from a show that they used to be on called Would You Fall For That? And I'm going to not show you the whole video, but I'm going to show you part of the video here because this is what they ended up doing with a group of people on a boardwalk out in New Jersey. So what ended up happening is the first thing they did was a baseline test with everybody. And they're going to give them this power drink that's nothing but water. But just to see what would happen if you just thought you were getting something that could help you out. So they gave them a drink. They said stuff like, you know, it has more oxygen in it. It's plugging everything in. We've got some, you know, nutrients in it that's going to help you um, access energy faster. Things like that. Got them going. Get them a little bit hyped up. And then after that, they went back and they had them hit it again. And so, kind of the typical feat of strength at a carnival, right? Bam. So this guy went from 7 to a 10, all because he drank a little bit of water. Sorry. Got used to Zoom class. So the question becomes then, why do you think the people in the video got stronger? And usually what will end up happening is, you know, they expected to get stronger. Maybe they tried harder. They were told they were going to be stronger, and that was enough. And that is something called the placebo effect. If your parents are old enough, or maybe your grandparents are old enough, they may have used to watch a show called MASH. There was an episode where they talked all about this. They gave all the soldiers, they ran out of pain pills, but they had sugar pills, so they gave them that. And just the fact that they knew they were getting pain medication was enough to do it. Now, obviously, it was a fictional show, but there is something to be said for that. Um, so here's what ends up happening here. Um, I want to do a video, same idea, except I really want to give students caffeine to see if anything happens. And so this is what my plan is, initial pulse, or measure the initial pulse, give each student some caffeine in the form of Coca-Cola, wait, then that is not a paid sponsorship, by the way. Okay, just thought I would double check. Wait for a specified time, measure the final pulse rate, and then from there, compare the final pulse rate to the initial pulse rate. Okay. So then I ask, what are some things that could be wrong with that plan? Okay. What other variables could be sources of the increased heart rate? So students would then go through, you'll go through and write some stuff down. If you're following these notes along, if you printed out the copy from below, go ahead and do that. Some of the typical examples are here. I'm not saying that if your answer is not on this list, it doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Okay. You may have to come up with something else I just didn't think about. You have nothing to compare it to. You're comparing it to the initial heart rate, but you have nothing to compare. Could it just be somebody who, what about people who didn't get caffeine, right? Um, the sugar could be affecting the pulse rate. How do you know it's the caffeine that's doing it? There's sugar in Coca-Cola. That could be it. And the other thing, too, is that people know that they're getting caffeine. And if you know that you're getting caffeine, most people think it's, a, I mean, know it's a stimulant. So like, oh boy, and they could just, their heart rate could just increase just by the knowledge. I mean, our hearts and greats increase just by thinking of something scary, right? So how do we know about that? So then go back up to the list here and propose a solution for each. So some of the solutions could be like this. First of all, we need a control group. A control group is something, and we'll talk more about this on the next video, on the formalized one. A control group happens to be something where it's you're comparing it to, you, you're not doing anything to them. So in this case, they're not getting any caffeine. Okay. Sugar could affect the pulse rate. So what we're going to do is we're going to control for that variable. In this case, everybody will get sugar. So that way we can kind of know, is it the caffeine or not? And lastly, how do we know it's not the placebo effect? Okay, you're going to do something that's called blinding. You're going to nobody's going to know if they're going to get the caffeine or not. Now, um, so design an experiment to test the effect of the caffeine has a heart rate. This is a very good basic experiment. 
Okay. The first thing that you do is that you're going to take the groups, or take all the students, and you're going to randomly split them into two groups. You're going to give one group regular Coca-Cola, and you're going to give the other group caffeine-free Coca-Cola. So they both are getting sugar. So if sugar is affecting the, the pulse rate, you should see that. And if it's not the caffeine, you shouldn't see a difference between the two groups. That's why we, that's why we come back up here and we're saying we're control, ugh, controlling for that. And then after you do that, you're going to measure the heart rate, and then you're going to compare the two groups, or the change in heart rate, actually. Okay, so we're going to, specifically, this is what this would look like, and this is called a completely randomized design. All right, let's make sure I've got this up here. We're going to take 100 students, let's say. Okay, and we're going to go through random assignment. When we say random assignment, this is the full, you know, simplified random sample. We number the students 1 through 100. We do a random number generator, names in a hat, random number list, whatever. And the first 50 unique numbers off of that will go into group 1. And that's going to be 50 students. And then the everybody else is going to be in group 2. And that's going to be 50 students. One of them is going to get treatment one. One of them is going to get treatment two. So let's say this first one up here. Treatment one. And we're going to say they are going to get Coca-Cola. And then, oops, regular. Actually, then here, what you would actually, I forgot to do this. Take initial heart rate. Treatment number two, you're going to get caffeine-free Coke. So you're going to have them drink that. Same amount. So if it's eight ounces, eight ounces, one can, one can, whatever. And then after that, take the heart rate again. And then you're going to compare the change in heart rate. This kind of ladderish form or bracket form is a really good way to lay out your experiments. It's easy. It, you have the forms. You can split it up. Um, because sometimes when you start breaking these things up, it's kind of unclear who gets what. So we're going to formalize this here in a second. We'll see you, in, see you then. Talk to you soon.